Good afternoon and welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Angel Antonio Ruiz. Uh, I'm Centro's Assistant uh, Associate Director of Arts and Culture. Uh, this is the last event of the semester for us, so we're really happy uh, to be here on this cafecito con Laura Bravo, curator of the exhibition Ida y Vuelta, and with her assistant, Donald Escudero. Um, our cafecitos are meant to be intimate but in-depth conversations with artists, scholars, and activists in general. Uh, in this particular case, uh, we're going to be talking directly with uh, Laura Bravo about the ideas, the process, and the curatorship um, of this beautiful exhibit that we are so honored to have here at Centro. Uh, this exhibit opened on uh, May or March that this year. Uh, it has been extended up to December 16. So just two more days before the, the exhibit close, you are more than welcome to come by and check it out. Um, Ida Vuelta was visited by over a thousand people, including local public schools, Hunter College faculty and students, uh, our history students from uh, CUNY grad school and uh, the, the general public. It was integrated into classes and courses, uh, and we put together like a brief but in-depth uh, discussion guide that can be downloaded on our website, along with the catalog uh, for the exhibition. Um, Ida Vuelta is the first exhibition that Centro has put together in the last 10 years, uh, and it will have not been possible without the support of Congressman Adriano Espaillat uh, through a congressional earmark that we're very thankful to have, Hunter College Foundation, and of course, in partnership with Hunter Art Galleries Department. Uh, and talking about Hunter Art Galleries, um, I'm happy to introduce you to Katie Hoop Morgan, who is the Deputy Director of the Hunter um, Galleries uh, at the university. Katie? Hi, Angel. Thank you. And uh, thanks, everyone, for being with us today. Um, it's an honor to share a stage with uh, the Centro team, especially Angel and Laura and Donald. Um, wish we were in person, but it's the next best thing. Um, so I'm Katie. I, um, I run the Hunter College Art Galleries. Uh, we're a constellation of galleries uh, that are Part of Hunter College and spread around the city. So in addition to the Hunter College, uh, Hunter East Harlem Gallery, uh, we also have the Lubsdorf Gallery at the main 68th Street campus where we have an exhibition of the work of Elio Otsika and Neville Dalmeda. Uh, that exhibition is on view through March 30th. So I encourage you to visit our website and check that uh, exhibition out. And um, we also do projects at the 205 Hudson Gallery space, which is the Hunter MFA building. Um, this has been a really special project for us to partner uh, with Centro uh, in such a profound way uh, with an exhibition that I feel like has such staying power and such um, uh, such power and has affected the community in a beautiful way. So I know we'll be talking more about that. Um, I want to extend quick thanks, uh, echo Angel's thanks to um, Hunter College Foundation and also the Hunter College Art Galleries team, including art handlers and gallery attendants. Um, uh, shout out to Jeremiah Drake, who has really been the face of this exhibition and the galleries and has welcomed most of the people on Hell mentioned. Uh, he's been there to welcome them into the space. So we couldn't do this without him. Uh, I know he's here on the Zoom somewhere. Um, so I would love to now introduce uh, Laura Bravo. Uh, such an honor to get to know her and her practice. Um, she holds a PhD in art history from the Universidad Autónoma de Madrid in Spain. Uh, thanks to several grants, she's been a researcher at the Tate Britain, the Museum of Modern Art in New York, La Maison Europane de la... Oh my goodness. So many <laughs> different languages here, Laura. <laughs> Uh, de la Photographie in Paris and uh, the Program of Latin American Studies at Princeton. She's a professor in the art history program at the University of Puerto Rico, Rio Piedras campus. 
Uh, she's presented her research at many conferences, congresses, and symposia uh, in Europe, the US, the Caribbean, in institutions such as Museo Nacional, Centro de Arte Reina Sofia in Madrid, uh, University of Amsterdam, and the I Film Institute, uh, various other illustrious institutions all around the world, including uh, CUNY and Brooklyn College and Hunter College. Um, it's our honor to have her back. She's the author of several incredible publications. Um, can't list them all just now, but um, I think an important one in your bio is a project you did, a, a special issue of Centro Journal of the Center for Puerto Rican Studies at Hunter, the um, counter streaming. Uh, she was a co-editor of counter streaming, measuring the impact of cultural remittance, um, which I'm sure you can get a hold of through Centro to this day. Um, and also a special issue of Arte y Políticas de Identidad Journal uh, through the Universidad de Murcia in 2018. Um, and she's curated many exhibitions, including uh, this one, um, 15 exhibitions and art projects in museums and art galleries in Puerto Rico, the US, um, and back in Spain. So as you can see, we're, we're just so lucky to have her with us to work on this exhibition and uh, with us today to speak more about her practice. Um, I'll pass the mic to you, Laura, um, to introduce uh, Donald. Thank you, dear Katie, for this uh, kind introduction and uh, hello, amigues, the Centro, hello, Angel Antonio. Uh, we are more than honored. It's an honor to be here with you. Uh, thanks to to Centro and thanks, thanks to uh, Hunter East Harlem Gallery for organizing this wonderful cafecito that we're happy to share with all of you. Hello to the audience and uh, please let me introduce uh, an special guest, a surprise <laughs> guest. Uh, this is Donald Escudero. He's, he was, he is my, uh, the, the assistant curator for Ida y Vuelta, someone who has been fundamental for this project. So I think that it was more than fair to have him with us tonight, this afternoon. <laughs> hello. <laughs> Donald, do you want to say hello? Uh, hello, everyone. <laughs> Great, great, great. All right, um, this is how we're gonna run the rest of the programming. Uh, Katie and I will be in conversation with Laura and with Donald. Uh, if you have any question, there is a bottom at, at the bottom of the Zoom link where you can do your Q and A. We're gonna try to capture some of your questions and include them in our conversation. Uh, this event's gonna last like like the conversation's gonna be like for 30 minutes. Uh and after that we will bring some of the questions. Okay. Uh so Laura to begin with, um talking about this exhibition, um you're a migrant yourself and either vuelta is definitely about the migration experience, right? Um uh, specifically the Puerto Rican migration experience. Uh but you being a migrant yourself, what was the inspiration and what did you see of yourself in this process and putting together this exhibition? That's a very interesting question that uh, brings uh, so many so many interpretations and I have to go back to 2014 to uh, start from the beginning. Uh, when we first uh, were working on the idea of an exhibition, uh, we started uh, thinking how artists have um, uh, thought or how artists have uh, conceptualized the, uh, an artwork, an object that can be interpreted as a uh, migration experience, as an, uh, an, um, as an experience of migration. So as we were interviewing, artists and we were listening to their own uh, life experience, I became aware that some of these stories, uh, I didn't, uh, I, I hadn't uh, thought about them so deeply or with uh, proper time, but I started thinking or picturing myself in these same situations. For example, let me tell you a couple of, of, sort of uh, stories. And when we were interviewing Jose Ortiz Pagan, he was mentioning how was the experience of uh, leaving 
the island, uh, living his place of of uh, the, his his family his family house, and uh, he was telling us that uh, they made a big party, uh, like a farewell party, where uh, everyone was going to be very happy, and uh, they were going to say good luck and a bon voyage and uh, we wish you a very nice uh, trip and this party became uh, something very sad something like uh, a funeral let's see because we are saying goodbye to someone you love and you don't know how the um, real experience is going to be and i was picturing myself in this same situation being in the airport uh, having my family saying goodbye when I was going to take an, an airplane uh, from Madrid to San Juan and having this uh, sense of that everything is going to be fantastic and everything is going to go well. And I, when I saw my mother crying, all full in tears, and uh, I hadn't thought about uh, the fact that uh, when she was crying, maybe she was sad because she was saying goodbye or maybe she was... Uh, worry that she was aware that is it was not going to be very difficult or very easy sorry uh, for me in a place where I didn't know anyone or that was four my four thousand miles away from where I was living and um, I started thinking myself as a migrant but not only myself as uh, someone who is working in a university or someone who is curated an exhibition but also myself as a mother and as a daughter, uh, having my mom now for a thousand miles away and having my daughter in another place, uh, well, in my in my place, in the place where, we, where they were born in Puerto Rico, are so far from their grandma, from their grandpa, from their aunts, and from uh, this side of the family. So I started really analyzing myself. Uh, I have felt these things too, and I, I also feel uh, homesick and I also feel that it's difficult to be physically in one place and being mentally or being emotionally in another place and uh, this sense of displacement. And uh, so listening to artists and listening to personal experience experiences made me really think uh, about the project of, uh, I mean, in the perspective of being a migrant myself. Although I have to say that uh, when I was curating or curating the exhibition, I tried to be very focused on the, the fact that I was an art historian and uh, having the accuracy of the of my profession, uh, creating a narrative and creating something that people, the viewers, uh, could really relate to the personal experience or collective experiences of uh, being away from home, let's see. I guess sort of jumping off of, of that comment, thank you, Laura. Um, how did that process lead to the selections that you ended up making of the, the artists in the exhibition? We have 16, I believe, uh, total. Is um, it more? 18, 19 artists. Um, it was more. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When, how did you make those four, choices? 25 artworks. Yeah. Uh, I try to detach myself personally of the selection of the of the artworks, and uh, we were really trying to make something like um, a story or a diary or a journey, uh, where uh, someone who is metaphorically going to migrate has many fantasies and dreams. You can see this in the very first part of the exhibition with the wheel of fortune or the roulette of fortune that uh, you want to have a lot of success and you picture in your mind that everything is going to be uh, perfect and uh, fantastic. And uh, then uh, not so nice stories come when uh, you are in a foreign country or uh, in a country where uh, it's, it's, not your, it's not the place where you have been raised, where you have roots, where you can speak the language uh, that you usually speak, where you don't have family, where you have to create another, to create other, other links or relations to people. So we were trying to give a broad perspective of uh, what 
the uh, diverse experiences of being a migrant uh, are from their own stories of these different artists. Uh, I would love, Laura, to highlight um, the image that we are seeing right behind you, right? El Velorio yeah. um, de Francisco Yeris Estero, um, exhibited at a Museo de Historia, Antropología y Arte de la Universidad de Puerto Rico. Um, this exhibition began there, right, at this museum. Was this artwork considered part of the exhibition somehow? Because Francisco, you're definitely someone who migrated. And also on this piece, we can see kind of the clash between, you know, different art techniques, uh, the impressionism, the realistic, uh, you know, can, can you talk a little bit more about that? Was it conceptualized or included as part of the exhibition or? Not really <clears throat> included as part of the exhibition, but you cannot uh, avoid, you cannot see this wonderful and amazing artwork, which by the way, was the, um, the place, the room where the photographs were Maximo, uh, Maximo Rafael Colón's photographs were exhibited. The truth is that Ida y Vuelta is some kind of uh, two exhibitions in one. We have a parallel exhibition, which is called Prelude or Preludio, uh, picturing uh, migration in the 1970s in New York uh, from the lens, with the lens of uh, the camera, Maximo's camera. So we were trying to uh, place these, uh, to show these photographs from the very beginning. And the very beginning of the uh, uh, museum, when you visit the Museum of um, Historia, Antropología y Arte at the university, is this room. Mm -hmm. So we thought that it is it was a wonderful place to have two masters of Puerto Rican art in the same room, a Puerto Rican master uh, in the 19th century, a painter, and a Puerto Rican master of photography in the 20th century, 20th, 21st century, who is Maximo Colón. And I think that uh, uh, Francisco Yer was very proud of sharing. <laughs> he metaphorically felt very proud of uh, uh, making this, opening this dialogue of someone, uh, about someone who is picturing the place where he he's migrating to, uh, in, this, in that case, in that case, France, and in Maximo's case, New York, and changing or in exchanging this, this views, this sense of uh, being uprooted or detached or displaced and then going back home. And uh, I guess that year he finally stayed in Puerto Rico, uh, in Puerto Rico, he didn't go back to France, but he, uh, Maximo is always coming back. So, we can make, we, we could uh, be creating some stories. I think that it was a perfect setting for the, for this, uh, for these pictures, for these uh, photographs. And then we had the rest of Ida y Vuelta. Uh, Another sense was, that we can add uh, to that is that Maximo is also picturing uh, traditions as uh, Francisco Yer uh, do with the, with the wake, right, Laura? Very, popular or very uh, uprooted traditions in their place mm -hmm. of birth. So we some, some, somehow we, we decided to be here with you tonight because we, this is where Ida Vuelta began in 2017, six years now. Although the truth is that the project, it began in 2014. Mm -hmm. So in January we will be it would be a decade. Oh, wow. It's been so long. <laughs> hmm? So much has happened since. Yeah. <laughs> we are with Ida Vuelta. I think that there's so much to say and there's so much to see and to think about this exhibition and of the migration experiences that we all have in, in first person or family, friends, and not only in Puerto yeah. Rico. Yeah, uh, that was a question I I had actually for for you both around you know there's so many universal aspects of migration that I think many Americans um, visitors to America can relate to, um, 
But I'm also curious to hear you speak a bit about the circular migration idea, which was a newer concept to me when we started talking about the project. And I know it's been a new concept for visitors to the show. And I feel like that's emerged as a fairly unique Puerto Rican aspect of the Puerto Rican migratory experience. We can see this, uh, the sense of circular migration from a global perspective too, is not, not only Puerto Rican uh, experience where people are always coming back and back and forth this uh, living in between two places and not feeling really like you belong to any, any of this. Uh, we started thinking about this yo-yo migration or circular mig migration from a global experience uh, reading on uh, a theory of migration on on uh, international uh, experiences and and text and then we began uh, listening to art uh, listening to their stories and and watching them uh, watching themselves be explaining and be sharing their own for, for me this was a fundamental part of Ida Vuelta having them uh, talking and talking and opening their hearts about what their true uh, experience has have been. This was a very emotional, by the way, very emotional part of, of Ide Vuelta that uh, you also can see the viewers, the audience can see in, uh, in a video that we created uh, where we can see the artists talking about uh, the experiences of uh, migration and, um, and their work and um, where, how they see their future, if they think that they are going back to Puerto Rico or they are staying some, some places. And uh, yeah, it's a very particular experience in Puerto Rico as uh, we, most of us know the, the, uh, this, the fact of the, the experience of the Wawa area, the flying bus. You take a, a plane and in three, four hours, you can be in New York and you take the family and you go back in holidays and then you go back again to New York and or now Florida, which is a state that has more Puerto Ricans, uh, we guess in, in the United States. So is this feeling or, or this experience, these real experiences of being uh, from one place to another, always on the go, always, uh, having your suitcase ready uh, because you are uh, coming back and going going back to the place you work. So this is, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a sense of the, even the title, Ida y Vuelta. I will, you know that you are going to go back. You leave, but you are with your mind when you arrive, when you get to New York, when you get to Florida, you're already picturing your travel back. When am I going to go back to the beach or to the, wonderful sun and the palm trees and family. So, yeah, Angel. Please don't talk about palm trees and beach. I'm in New York right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a windy day today. It's not very sunny today, just to make you feel good. But it's yeah. getting easy for Christmas. But I love this feeling of being short sleeping Christmas. I'm very Puerto Rican in this sense. <laughs> okay. Uh, Lara, you, you briefly mentioned something about, you know, these interviews, you know, that you put together. It's I feel like it's such an integral part of the exhibition, right? The set of interviews where you pretty much interview all the artists. And um, um, why was it important, right, to include these interviews, to give the artists their own voice besides what they can express in their artwork, right? Um, and, and how that you know, came together. I know that Donald was a, also part of this beautiful project. Uh, if you can talk a little bit more about that, that would be really, really nice. I think we interviewed, to be honest, like 40-something, 50 uh, artists, curators, art critics, mm -hmm. and people connected to academia. Pedro, Pedro Juan Hernández, who, by the way, I think he worked in the Central Library. Um, Pedro Juan. And uh, as I was telling you before, this experience was amazing. For everyone. Was amazing, uh, first of all, for the privilege of having young artists and so experienced and um, recognized and uh, fundamental artists in Puerto Rican history. Having them talking about the artwork 
that we are seeing in the museum or in the gallery and talking about their life, I think is a very important document for Puerto Rican art and Puerto Rican history. We have Adal talking and uh, in the video, we don't have her, we don't have him physically here in presence, but we still feel uh, that we are seeing him uh, in person when he talks about being this blur portraits or being feeling New York and feeling that he's from both places and at the same time. Uh, and uh, as I was telling you before, it was, it got uh, it got very emotional sometimes. I still remember Jose Ortiz Pagan uh, interview, and I will never forget Maximo's interview too. We even had to stop recording because we got so emotional. We started crying uh, and we uh, really uh, were putting ourselves in the shoes of what it means to be seven, nine year old, and seven, nine year old boy and having you uprooted from the place that you are born and taking you to the, how you call it, the, uh, well, New York, the concrete jungle. You leave the nature, you leave, uh, uh, you leave the, the, the island, you leave greenery and the water, the sea, the beach, and the, the, you see yourself in a place where you don't, where you, you don't speak uh, the, a word of English, you have uh, no friends, where you have to um, uh, grow up uh, in, an, in, in a setting that is not yours, let's see. So this got very, very sentimental. Um, you can see that this uh, some, kind of the, some kind of migrants have open wounds that are difficult to, to heal because he was telling us a story that was already, I mean, it happened 50 years ago and it was still very alive. So having this experience and having his heart, his heart, heart open for us uh, was a privilege. And we, are, we were very honored uh, for this great artist and for all the artists, uh, very, very sadly. And unfortunately not all of them could be Part of the world that this is this was one of the hardest and toughest part of the uh, curating part of curating the exhibition or finally selecting uh, some artworks. But when uh, here we are, maybe awesome. we could, we could share the the link where people can see these interviews in the. Um, let's see if I if I manage to do uh, to to share the link in the YouTube. Uh, where people can see these uh, important and re relevant uh, interviews. As a follow-up question, Laura, and thank you for that okay. answer. Um, why was it important, right, to explore through an exhibition uh, the Puerto Rican migration experience uh, that it seems to be going on forever, right? Uh, from uh, Francisco Yer, Maximo, and then Monica Felix to just name a few people. Uh, why is important? I think because it's Puerto Rican history, uh, because it is a fundamental part of the life experience of Puerto Rican artists. For example, now we are, um, it is, uh, our Basel is being celebrated and you can see many artists uh, working in, in the United States or sort of having a lot of shows on, well, not only the United States, we have Brenda in Madrid, we have Osvaldo now in Australia, he was in Germany when we uh, when we were working in the exhibition. And uh, uh, I think it is some kind of homage to Puerto Rican history and Puerto Rican artists who sometimes have to leave the archipelago to uh, find other places to, to show the work, to to open path, to to have a life as an artist, but always this is something we learn too in the through the interviews. They are always with a foot on Puerto Rico. I mean, they they think of themselves uh, going to come back one time or thinking about the holidays when we they will be able to to go back to the 
island or to the archipelago to the to their families to 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 the weather to the I mean they and they feel the need to uh, give back give back this is something we also learned they want to give back to Puerto Rico all, all of they are all of what they are what they learn what they the roots in general and I think it is it was our uh, attempt to honor this fact and we had an amazing time six well 10 years now <laughs> thank you for by the way thank you for for having this exhibition in El Barrio where there are so many migrants uh, Puerto Rican uh, the Puerto Rican community who has been for so long living in in this neighborhood and who are also a very important part of culture and of uh, New York's history. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's resonated really beautifully with the surrounding community, which is always a goal we have for the galleries. Um, and uh, Jeremiah just commented on the powerful oh, emotions <laughs> that the <laughs> viewers have been experiencing, which uh, we had a chance to to sort of talk about that um, earlier today, and it really is you know people in tears visiting um some of these art mm -hmm. artworks and you can see the you know the ways that the artists you know putting so much personal story into their work really it translates to the visitors very powerfully um i wanted to ask how you know there's several works in the exhibition that are interactive and i was curious how you thought about those works as sort of another layer of that relationship uh we uh we were very happy to include interactive uh, works like anaida's uh, roulette or the wheel of fortune marta mabel the airplanes where you have to build your own airplane and people love really yes. they really love being immersed in the uh, work and being able to touch or to play for example the vault uh by jose ortiz pagan and uh, they begin playing and having a fun time and uh, with smiles on their on their faces but then uh, they are aware or they realize that they are invited to feel the pain of a real migrant themselves they feel the pain of uh, having to exit or having to leave the island of uh, having us an award of as a prize, they they have uh, misery or they have uh, defeat uh, once they once they travel overseas, and uh, then the smiles you can see that they turn into a feeling of uh, home being home, homesick or sadness or uh, nostalgia in the end um, and. It was an invitation for people not only to break the walls of what a museum is supposed to be or what art is supposed to be, to invite also the community kids, people from uh, any any anyone from the community, but also to put yourself in the in the shoes of someone who is living the place the place of where they were where they were born they 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 were raised etc. So it was an invitation to live it. Uh, in the first person and I think that it really went very well people get very emotional we get emotional too um, if people oh, from the audience of course uh, and thank you if people from the audience have any questions please use the the mm -hmm. box of questions right at the bottom of the um Zoom window. Um, there's a question uh, from the audience. How does the colonial reality of Puerto Rico shape the migration experience of these artists? Uh, the colonial uh, migration was also very present, uh, not only in, by the way, not only the exhibition, but also in the catalog, which by the way, I'm going to show here because you can read and uh, I'm going to, to ask uh, Angel Antonio to share our newly published uh, uh, catalog in Centro, uh, digital catalog. So it will be 
uh, open for you and ready for you to, to read in your computers or devices. It was very present and it was analyzed by a scholar that we are very thankful. And we, it was uh, fantastic, his collaboration with Dr. Jorge Duani, uh, talking about how, well, yeah, uh, Puerto Ricans have a US passport, but uh, having uh, the experience of being in the United States uh, doesn't make you feel like uh, you are really from the United States, but uh, also feeling like uh, feeling like an outsider or feeling like uh, it's difficult to put in words or to put a label. Um, it is also very um, described with uh, stereotypes, with, which is something that um, is also very present in in the world as stereotypes and labels. And well. Ida Vuelta is an exhibition that is can be revisited uh, from the moment it was first, first exhibited in 2017. Now we can see in the Ida Vuelta in the, uh, the moment of uh, what Puerto Ricans call displacement. For example, by uh, Law 20, where um, something that has caused young people to leave uh, their places, their, uh, their, their professional lives. Um, in Puerto Rico, for example, doctors that we also see. <laughs> this is also a very, I mean, uh, doctors in medicine that uh, they leave the island, they leave uh, for, for a better place to, to, to um, work professionally in the United States. And uh, we can see how migration uh, is also a, a very big or intense flow or wave of migration is, is very present now due to, let's say, colonial practices. So we, I think that we made an exhibition in between 2014 and 2017 that was revisited after Hurricane Maria and that can be revisited now in the context of uh, La Junta de Control Fiscal or low 20 and all these things that are happening now where people, academics, uh -huh, academics people have to forcibly, we would say, leave the island, the archipelago. If you were about to, and this is gonna sound a little crazy, to do an either well, the second part, uh, after Maria, what are the artists that you think, you know, should be included on, on that exhibition? Simple question. We just try to use simple questions today. I think that Hurricane Maria was uh, an experience, a trauma that really changed our lives. And is, I mean, uh, let's say something crazy too. It's impossible to see ourselves uh, as the same persons before and after Maria. I think that artists, uh, people in general, any of us, uh, are uh, are someone before and after the hurricane. So any artist would really say that Hurricane Maria has changed their experience, their way of their their vision, their their way they they create artworks. But um, I will I will stay very I I will say a very um, I don't know discreet. I think that these artists and these artworks work perfectly picture in migration before and after Maria. Uh, the exhibition opened in February 2017. Then it closed. Well, it closed because of a strike in April, but that's another. Uh, in a second cafecito, I will tell you about it. <laughs> uh, but it, it was also closed for uh, in September after, well, in Irma, September, um, the first days of September, because there were two hurricanes, Irma and Maria then. And when we reopen, when the, the museum reopens the exhibitions, we could see that the works work perfectly, showing what we were seeing, people flying away from a medical disaster, from health, humanitarian problems. So um, these artworks in Ida y Vuelta um, were some kind of envisioning something that was really going to happen. Uh, in, the 20th of September 2017. 20, uh, so they, all these artworks really, really work uh, after Maria. I would choose the same artist. 
and, <laughs> and the same artworks. And in another project, I think that we would really love to work with so many artists that so gently and kindly uh, gave us their time and their places of work and their and their experiences and that finally they didn't have the opportunity to to be in either world. But we will work in other projects, I guess. I'm sure. Thank you for that. I'm glad to know that there's gonna be other projects. Um <laughs> Going back to the colonial situation, you, you just mentioned the passport, right? But we do have a piece in the exhibition, which is a, a Dal Maldonado passport, right? Um, can you talk a little bit about the importance of having that, uh, you know, imaginary thing that's part of the exhibition and how powerful that is in the context of a country that is a colony that doesn't have the right to have their own citizenship and how that shapes, you know, the, the whole experience of, of the exhibition. Adalmado Nado, he was a, a visionary and uh, uh, I love his work because he could really, uh, from fiction, he was picturing something that is very real. And something that, I mean, uh, our imagination and our uh, fiction experiences, they are also part of our lives. We live in, with metaphors, we live with fantasies, we have a lot of things uh, going on in ourselves that can be seen or can be shared or or, or told. And he had the uh, um, power of... Uh, making fiction uh, a very realistic thing. This um, Puerto Rican Republic, the passport of the Puerto Rican Republic uh, was a perfect uh, metaphor of what it feels to uh, be in Puerto Rican with uh, an American or a US passport, uh, feeling that you are none of those, but, the, but both at the same time. So and by the way, not only uh, the Puerto Rican Republic passport, but uh, the money with the dollar, with the the, the dollar, with the with the, the chicken yeah. or the hand, the rooster, the rooster, <laughs> in the as a as a as a symbol, and also the domino, and uh, no, so the map, the anthem, the 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 city, the the urban design. So uh, he was a uh, some kind of uh, visionary. We miss him. It would have been wonderful to have him for the opening, but he was somehow through his artworks. I wish I had a Puerto Rican Republic passport. By the way, and I'm going to share experience. I asked him. I wanted to. I wanted to have the Puerto Rican passport, and he said, "Yeah, one day I will do when you deserve it." But I, it seems that I never deserve it. <laughs> Things happen. But I have found a wonderful portrait that he that he took, uh, and it's a very it's a thing that I treasure. Yeah. I want to add something. Please. Um, talking about the passport, uh, some artists and um, told us that they don't. Well, we discovered in the, in the path that uh, we don't deal with uh, like a political migration. Uh, instead, we, yeah. we deal with a, with a political. It's not uh, a real migration because you know that you have an American passport and this is not migration, but... But it's a cultural migration. Language. I mean, the moment mm -hmm. when you leave your family, you leave the place where you were born, the place where you belong, or you feel that you belong, you change your geography, you change your language. You change your people, you know, uh, traditions, that is migration, your beliefs. Yeah, it's like crossing two nations on both sides. And, and some people will argue that that's not political. Oh, yes. Well, pol political but in terms of the, you know, the legal, papers legal. and forms. And <laughs> because but of, the, of the document, because of the passport. Yeah, but definitely that's political too. People who are not from Puerto Rico, <laughs> you have to put yourself in the in the in the person of the migrant who is feeling uh, this experience to really know what is happening. 
this is why the interviews were so important. Not only theory and readings and mm -hmm. scholars and the people who create and people who experience what migration is and the difficulties. Maybe I need to rephrase political to legal migration. <laughs> the language is very important, but it, it also depends uh, who, who is using the words. From what perspective, based on what experience, based on what knowledge, based on many things. So this is why education and dialogue is so important. We can learn from history, learn, learn from knowing to ourselves, listening to ourselves. And sharing the work of artists that kind of yeah. illustrate the <laughs> breadth art. of the yeah. experience. Yeah, how diverse, even within this one exhibition, there's, for every artist, there's a different experience of migration illustrated. And let's um, say, I also wanted to mention that, although, um, all the artists, every artist included here is Puerto Rican or from a Puerto Rican with a Puerto Rican origin. Uh, this is an exhibition that is also thought to raise questions in a global perspective. We have been sharing uh, Ida Vuelta through conferences or talks uh, in different uh, uh, settings or different universities and places. And uh, we have been able to listen and to and to share the experiences with other migrants, for example, from Latin America in Spain or other places. And they they were saying they were telling us something that we really appreciated that uh, they saw themselves in these artworks. You you change the Puerto Rican flag and you put them. Uh, you show the Mexican flag or the Argentinian or the Chile uh, flag, and, and people told us. I see myself. I have felt these experiences. I, I, I am that person. I am that artist. I myself have gone through that, and this was very valuable for us. We we became aware that this is what we wanted to do. We have particular uh, experiences, but it's also a global perspective. There's a couple questions coming in in the chat around specific artworks that were selected. So someone was asking about the process of choosing specific works um, and also about sort of your experience of the relationship among works once you saw them all together and you've now seen them installed in three different spaces. But um, someone was sort of curious to hear some of your favorite interactions among the works um, considering how diverse the work is so many different materials um, represented lots of colors and um, different materials that are all interacting so just some thoughts on uh, how it felt to see these works in the space and the uh, selection process uh, diversity is something that we uh, really wanted to to be the fundamental part of the Vuelta, diversity in media, diversity in generations of those artists that were working, very young people. Diversity even, not all of them are migrants, but all of them have felt uh, the, have felt themselves in the dilemma of do I live? the island? Do I stay? What should I do? I'm sick of everything. I'm sick of being a colony. I'm sick of politics. I'm sick of everything, but I want to stay here. So this has been the experience of uh, of also many artists. And um, in the end, we we tried to focus on what the artwork was telling. Um, it was wonderful. It was quite a challenge to move not only physically, the, the, all the artworks to other uh, places of, uh, to other galleries in Philadelphia and now in New York. It was a challenge to move Ida Vuelta that was made for this museum to a very different um, setting, designed with uh, a different uh, scale, uh, spaces, walls, it was like uh, trying to to make a puzzle, like a Tetris. And uh, we made it in the end. We we had 
something very clear and very difficult, uh, and that was that we wanted all the artists to be part of Fide Vuelta in Philadelphia and in New York. We could not think of Fide Vuelta without even one artist. And we finally made it with not only all the artists, but all the artworks, at least. If it was a series, one, two, three, four. I know I'm very, <laughs> I can very, I can get very intense with my co-curators and with my partners in other places. Uh, there was always a place for all of them. And uh, I think that it was, in this sense, it was something very success successful, all the artists being represented. I'm feeling that they are part of Ide Vuelta, no matter what. That's wonderful. And thank you for pushing for that because, you know, the exhibition itself deserve it and the artists deserve it. Uh, I don't think we have much time for much more. I just want to say thank you for, you know, bring putting together this exhibition, trusting on our hands, you know, to bring it to El Barrio, to bring it to New York, where uh, I'm sure conversations were probably way so different from the conversations held back in Puerto Rico and the conversations held even in Philadelphia, because, um, you know, those are two different communities, two different experiences. Um, this has been an honor for, for us. It, it was a phenomenal work. Uh, People are asking what's next for Ida Vuelta. I don't know if there's anything next for Ida Vuelta, uh, but I'm sure there are going to be other projects coming up. Uh, and I want to thank again uh, Katie and Hunter Art Galleries for their partnership in this endeavor. Uh, it's been great to you know have our first exhibition in 10 years uh, at Hunter College and such a, such a massive and, and important exhibition for Puerto Ricans in general. Um, it was very overwhelming, you know, seeing the amount of students and community members that will pass through the lobby and just start interacting with the artwork. Uh, for some people, it was even the first experience where they felt they were allowed to participate on an yeah. art exhibition, right? And I think that's a super powerful message, especially for colonial individuals. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, people who are watching us that ha haven't have able to visit the exhibition is going to be open for two more days until December 16th. Uh, we share with you the link uh, where you can download um, the, um, the catalog for the exhibition. And, and this cafecito, along with the other cafecitos with conversations between Jose Ortiz Pagan and uh, Quintin Rivera, uh, the conversation between Maximo and Monica, all of those are going to be uploaded and available for people to finally watch it. So it's been a journey. Thank you for for you know being great partners in this and this journey. And thank you all for tuning in for today. Have a great evening. Thanks, Thanks everyone. So always. Let's see. Hasta pronto.